Aliyah Davis will step in. She's the center fielder. She swings at the first pitch, hits it deep to left center. Briggs drifting back, drifting back, just short of the fence, makes the catch. Davis put a charge into that one into a pretty hard wind. Davis, a 409 hitter with seven doubles and a couple of triples, but Briggs was equal to the task and one pitch and a long out here to start the ball game. And then we'll bring up Maddie Hayden, the left fielder. Briggs watching on replay, caught it, then bumped into the fence. Chopper up the middle over the bag. It's fielded by Petty, but she will have no play. Hayden, the lefty, will beat out the base hit. Hayden, a 328 hitter. And she is on base, and the Cajuns like to run. Hayden has stolen 10, and they have attacked the first pitch. That one wasn't hit quite as hard as the one Davis hit, but it was a chopper back up the middle. Once it got over Burzon, there was nothing to do for Petty except field it and look at it. Lefty batting, Laney Crater will step in, strike one at the knees from Sidney Burzon. Now, the Tigers did not have a good weekend against Auburn for the most part, but um, Sydney had a pretty good weekend, all considered. Fly ball to deep right, rooted it back, and it is out of here in front of the scoreboard and right, and it is two to nothing. The Cajuns quickly take the lead. As Prater hits her sixth of the season, a solid low line drive that got over the fence in front of the scoreboard. Pitch that Burzon left up over the plate and Prater turned on it. I was going to tell you that Burzon had a pretty good weekend against Auburn. A 10 and a third innings, only one earned run. And struck out 11, but she has been touched up for a home run here. Righty bet. Alexa Langlier is the second baseman, takes it inside, ball one. That is only the fifth homer that Berzon has allowed in 121 innings this season. And the Cajuns quickly lead two to nothing. They have been in attack mode early. There's a chopper off of Daniels. It'll go to Pleasant. Throw to first is not quite in time. And that should be a base hit for Langlier's. And it was a one hopper, hit pretty hard. Daniel reached up at third and deflected it. Pleasant's got it, but uh, Langlier, a good enough runner to uh, beat the play at first. And there's a chopper. Daniel goes up high to get that one. Third to second for the force. Third to first, not in time. Well, the Cajuns are in uh, attack mode. Lots of early swings. And they've been very aggressive. That was a down and in pitch and a pretty good one. Uh, got the result. Burzon was looking for a chopper. Now Langlier's got a single. She is forced out at second. Rowe, who just hit that one, is at first base. Now Brooke Ellistad, the third baseman, hitting from the left side, takes ball one low and in. Ellistad, 356 hitter, six homers, 33 runs batted in. And the 1-0, swing and a miss on a good changeup. With two down, runner at first, counts now one and one. Rowe has stolen five. And the count to the batter here, one and one. And a swing and a miss, pitched down and in. The count's a ball and two strikes. And the one two tried to check. Home plate umpire says she did not. Scott Mayer rings up Elstad, and that'll end the inning. So Elstad called for the swing, but the Cajuns get two runs on three hits, and they leave one. ULL two, LSU coming to bat when we return on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Tiger fans, this is Eddie Kennison, former LSU football wide receiver. If you know me, you know I'm all about making big plays. Tigers win! Tigers win! That's why I joined the team at LSU Sports Properties. Our goal here is to help businesses make big plays both on and off the field. If you want to give your brand that competitive edge and be a part of the biggest stage in college sports, give the corporate sponsorship team at LSU Athletics a call. Your brand, our fans. Utilize the power of LSU Athletics to promote your business and sponsor LSU Athletics today. Call 225-578-27. Hard fans. More than hard fans. More than 260 national titles thousands of All-Americans and hundreds of Olympians. 
and the one conference where every catch, shot, swing, and stride just means more. Tiger fans 12 and younger, don't miss your chance to be a part of Mike Hits Club for only $25. Get the official Mike's Kids Club t-shirt, free admission to select LSU athletic events, and much, much more. To learn about upcoming events and to join, please visit LSUMKC.com. The Mike's Kids Club, presented by Shell. Back with more. LSU Fighting Tigers softball on the LSU Sports Radio Network. And the Tigers are down a couple. It'll be McKenzie Rudity to lead off. Rudity, Briggs, and Newland. LSU versus Auburn over the weekend. Just hit 208, 15 for 72. Rudity had a home run. Was in the Saturday game where Lynch threw the no hitter, and they will face the lefty Riassetto, who delivers an outside corner strike 0 1. LSU's troubles were against the lefty Sidney Lowe of Auburn, who had been struggling but found some success against LSU's left handed hitting lineup. Pitches away, and it's 1 and 1. Riassetto, 238 ERA, 10 and 2 record, 25th appearance, or 15th start, 85 and a third innings. And only 38 strikeouts, so not a power pitcher, but only 20 walks. She delivers down and away here, and it's 2-1. and one. Two to nothing, Cajuns. They got a two-run homer from Crater in the first inning. Top of the inning. Jam shot in the left field. It's a base hit for Rudity. Didn't get a ton of it, but put it in a good spot. The Tigers have something going to start the first inning. And that'll bring up Sierra Briggs, the Tiger center fielder. Briggs had a career-high tying 14-game hitting streak broken on Sunday. Comes in with a 372 average, five doubles, two triples, two homers, 17 RBI. And she runs up and takes a strike call over the outside corner. Cajun defense has Elistad at third, Vasquez at short, Langoliers at second, Rowe at first, Valdez catching, Hayden left, Davis center, and Falterman in right. The 0-1 runs up, takes strike two. Says home plate umpire Scott Mayer, Michael Thibodeau at first, Brian Sule at third. And the count is 0-2, and, and she ran up there, took it a little bit low, and it's 1-2. Well, these teams met five times last year. Briggs hit 250 against the Cajuns. LSU in the five games hit 243. Tried to hold up, could not on a pitch away. Briggs is out on strikes, and there's one out. So in the games, LSU hit 243. The Cajuns hit 276. In the five games that these teams met, Cajuns hit seven homers. LSU hit five. Here's Allie Newland batting third. Had been on a pretty good tear and then uh, struggled a little bit against Auburn. Shows a bunt. That's a good one. Catcher's going to come out, get it, throw to first in time. Sacrifice, though, will be granted to Newland, and uh, Rudity will go down to second base. Newland, though, was trying to bunt for a hit. Came pretty close to getting it, but uh, good play by Valdez. And they are now two down for Rayleigh Gutierrez. Gutierrez at LSU's only RBI Sunday against Auburn. She was two for nine in the series. She takes outside, ball one. Gutierrez, a 331 hitter, leads LSU with 12 doubles, has five homers, has driven in 32. The 1 0 popped up foul back. And the count is one and one. Riassetto pitched uh, in four appearances against LSU last year in those five games and did not give up a run. Pitches up and away, and it's two and one. She had four appearances all in relief, a total of seven and two thirds innings, seven hits, only walked one, struck out four. And Jerry Glasgow himself would like to go out and have a visit in the circle. 
with his sophomore lefty. Now with a 2-1 count and a runner at second base, Tigers down a couple. Today's game brought to you by Bridgeway Hospice, your champion's choice in comfort and compassionate care. Serving the greater Baton Rouge and most of South Louisiana areas, ask for Bridgeway for your loved ones. Hospice care. Bridgeway Hospice says, go Tigers. A runner at second, one out, uh, two outs, beg your pardon, here in the bottom of the second, the bottom of the first. And the pitch, Gutierrez watches it a little bit inside, apparently, and it's three and one. Taylor Pleasance is on deck, batting fifth. And the three one. That is low, ball four. And that will bring Pleasance to the plate. And Pleasance in a bit of a fall. Last year, she hit 333 against the Cajuns. Right now, she is at 280 for this year. And had a rough week, uh, 0 of 7 against Auburn. First pitch to Pleasance, up and away, ball one. And the 1 0 to the plate. Low and away, two balls, no strikes. Kind of an extended slump, though, for Pleasance. Her average was up over 340 not a long time ago. And she stands in here at 280. Watches that one. It's a strike, and it's 2-1. and one. Again, Rhea Seta, not uh, a particularly hard thrower. Not a ton of strikeouts, but pitches to weak contact. First and second, two down. And here's the pitch. And a strike over the outside corner, 2-2. Two and two. Uh, Rhea Seto has uh, some comparisons to Shelby Lowe, who we saw over the weekend. The 2-2. Line drive down the left field line. It's going to drop fair ball. Rudity rounds third. She will score. Going to third. Out at third base is Gutierrez. But the Tigers get one of the runs back. The first they've scored against Rhea Seto in a couple years. And the score is 2-1. to one. Watching the replay, Gary Glasgow, I think, wanted to ask the umpire if he's sure that run scored before the out at third. I'm pretty sure it did. It counts. We'll go to the second. LSU trailing ULL 2-1 here on the LSU Sports Radio Network. And we're back with the action. Coke Zero Sugar might be the best Coke ever? That's right, Jim. With an irresistible taste and zero sugar, Coke Zero Sugar is a must-try for any sports fan. So make sure you... Wait, Jim, I didn't mean try it right now. We're still on the air. Mmm, best Coke ever? Take a taste, Jen. Really? No, not right now, Jen. We got a game to call. Where's you at last? NIL is dominating the college sports scene, and LSU has positioned itself at the front of the pack. But to remain competitive and stay ahead of the rest, we need your support. Bayou Traditions is the official NIL collective of LSU athletics. Join the tradition and become a member by signing up online at BayouTraditionsCollective.com. Members receive exclusive access to LSU student-athletes that you can't get anywhere else. Help ensure LSU remains a leader in the NIL arena. Sign up today at BayouTraditionsCollective.com. Fighting Tigers softball, the LSU Sports Radio Network. So it is a two to one ball game going to the second inning. Pleasance gets credit for an RBI, much needed one for her. And Gutierrez thrown out at third, trying to extend as the left fielder Hayden got the ball in. So it's two to one, and here is Sydney Burzon delivering a little bit low and in to Victor Victoria Valdez, the catcher. Valdez, 289 hitter from the right side. And a good drop pitch outside corner strike, and it's one and one. And the one one coming. Bounced it, and it's two and one.
And the 2-1, low and in. Three and one. With all that traffic in the first inning, Burzon only threw 11 pitches. As Cajuns were attacking early and often. The 3-1, ground ball foul past third. Counts three and two. In fact, didn't get a chance to set the defense, but it's been LSU's pretty typical defense here of late. Daniel to start at third. Pleasance at short. Petty at second. Gutierrez at first. Badger on catching. And LSU's all-everything outfield of Newland in left. Briggs in center. Rudity in right. And the 3-2 jam shot over short. Pleasance back. And she makes an outstanding over-the-shoulder catch. Well, the long reach of a six-foot shortstop uh, comes into play there. As Valdez didn't get much of it, and Pleasant's going away from the infield, reached over, stretched out, and got it. One out. And Cecilia Vasquez, the shortstop, will bat. She's a 301 hitter, another righty. High chop. Burzon's got it in the circle. Throw to first. Spiked it. But Gutierrez dug it out, and there's two down. Sometimes those pitchers are you know, so used to the underhand, and every once in a while they've got to throw it overhand, it can get a little interesting. But Gutierrez, as she does on most plays, dug that one out. And here's Falterman, the lefty, drops a bunt. Going to let it roll, let it roll. Foul, first baseline. Good decision as they weren't going to get Falterman. And that ball was a, a few feet fair, but it did spin foul as Bajeron, Burzon, and Gutierrez all kind of stared at it. And nobody wanted any part of it. Falterman, speedy little right fielder. Not much of an average. He's under 100, but uh, very fast. She took it inside there, and it's one ball and one strike. Falterman, only her eighth start, 095 average, just two for 21 on the year. Two outs, bases empty. Runs up, takes that one high, and it's two and one. Corners in. The 2 1, creeping in more. Chopper to third, and it's over the bag. Fair ball. And Falterman's got her third hit of the year. So Daniel was creeping in, creeping in at third. Falterman just slapped down on it. It went over the batter. 4 0 9, their leading hitter. She tries to drop a bunt, and it's foul. That count is 0 and 1. at first. Here's the pitch. Low. Throw down to second. Bajeron thought Falterman was headed to second, but she wasn't. That was a good throw, too. Right on the bag. But uh, Falterman uh, sold it pretty good, but she was not going. She's two out of three on the year stealing bases. Cajuns will run. They've stolen 52. There she goes. Now they got a, kind of caught her in between. Bajeron's throw down to first, not in time. Now, Falterman had scampered a pretty good ways off the base and kind of got herself caught up a little bit. I think if Bajron had taken a little more time and kind of stared her down, Mike could have had a, a play there, but it's two and one. Tapper foul right at the plate, and it's two balls and two strikes. These teams will meet again next Tuesday night over in Lafayette. Lamson Park, Yvette Gerard Field. And the 2-2. Swing and a foul. That one was dipping down and in. 2-1. Cajuns lead the Tigers top of the second inning. Four hits for the Cajuns. Two for LSU. Here's the 2-2. Down and in. Watch that one. Good take and it's three balls and two strikes.
runner will definitely get to go this time. And the pitch, chopper to second. Good short hop by Petty, a scoop to first in time. And that will end the inning. No runs, a hit, one left. We got to the bottom of the second. Cajuns two, Tigers one on the LSU Sports Radio Network. This is going to the track, the wall, see ya! Tiger fans, have you ever wanted to watch LSU baseball on TV but hear the action from the LSU Sports Radio Network? Just sync the game with the LSU Sports mobile app. It's easy to do. Just pause the TV. Use the LSU Sports mobile app to stream the audio on your smartphone or tablet. Connect to a smart speaker, then wait for the audio to catch up to the point your TV is paused. Push play, and you are all set. Sync the game with the LSU Sports mobile app for iOS and Google devices. Download it today. Tigers win! Tigers win! The SEC is more than the Southeastern Conference. It's the Saturday Electrifying Conference. The Sunday Elite Conference. The Stadium Erupting Conference. The Stunning Eyeballs Conference. The Superbly Entertaining Conference. The Story Enduring Conference. And, more often than not, the See You Later Everyone Else Conference. This is the SEC, where it just means more. LSU Tiger fans are gearing up with real Tigers apparel and merchandise from the official online store at lsushop.net. Get jerseys, sideline gear, polos, t-shirts, hats, official team merchandise from Nike, accessories, and much more. Over 3,600 products all shipped right to your door. Head to the place real Tiger fans go for the selection only real Tiger fans get at lsushop.net. Back with more LSU Fighting Tigers softball on the LSU Sports Radio Network. At Woman's Hospital. Can we welcome our uh, viewers who are watching this simulcast on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Work on SEC Network Plus. Here's Carly Petty, Tigers second baseman, lefty versus lefty matchup. And Riasetto brings strike one over the inside corner. Petty among the Tigers who were hitting pretty well here lately. She was two for eight, a homer and a couple of runs batted in against Auburn. Pitches low in the dirt, one ball, one strike. Kind of came out of it in the midweek against Southeastern last Wednesday. And she had three hits, five runs batted in. And of course, the game winning three run homer in the bottom of the eighth. Here's the one one. Swing and a foul back, and it's one and two. LSU has seven lefties and two righties. Cajuns, five lefties, four righties in their lineup. Bajeron on deck, and then Kelly Lynch will hit. The one two just missed away. Good take by Petty, and it's two and two. And the 2-2 fouled away to the left side. Eddie homered Wednesday uh, against Southeastern, then again Friday against Auburn. Big gap in left center for her. She will go that way from time to time. Here's the 2-2 fouled down the left field line again. Honestly, not a particularly big crowd here tonight. Good mix, uh, of course, the home team and a good bit of vermilion red in the crowd. Cajuns in all vermilion red tonight, jerseys and pants. LSU in the white, sleeveless with purple pants. And the 2-2. Two -two. Fly ball foul again out of play. Now, Cajuns are set up pretty good. The biggest test on paper in their league was uh, at Texas State, and they went and won two out of three. They've got series in the Sun Belt left with Southern Miss, ULM, and Troy. As they are four up with nine to go. The 2-2 is low and in, ball three. And the 3-2. Line drive into left center field. Left fielder cannot get it. Petty found the gap, and she's headed for second and will stand there with a double. 
Opetti continues her good work at the plate as she went with that one. Finally found one she could keep between the lines and sliced it around Hayden out in deep left. And that'll bring up Macy Bajeron. Bajeron, 267 average coming in. Was one for six against Auburn. This pitch is low, ball one. Uh, the one hit she had was the double in the seventh inning that put LSU with runners at second and third in the bottom of the seventh, but then Michaela Daniel lined out to end the game. The 1-0 tried to go opposite field. Not a bad idea with the runner at second. Fouled it away, though, and the count's one and one. Two to one, Cajuns top of the second. LSU the runner at second, pitch up and in, two balls and a strike. Riasetto has pitched 85 and a third innings, that is second most. Sam Landry has pitched 130 and a third and has a 236 ERA. 2-1, a little bit low, ball three. Of the lower part of the order trying to get something going here in the second the 3-1 ground ball past the third baseman past the shortstop in the left field for a base hit Petty had to watch it the throw though sails from the left fielder all the way home and Bajeron uh, alertly watched that and took second base that was a mistake by Hayden and left because Petty there was no way she was going to try to score on that because she had to wait and make sure it got between the shortstop and the third baseman. No, Petty, uh, didn't, I mean, she was just pulling up at third, and Hayden's throw was very high. It went all the way through to the plate, and uh, Bajeron made her way to second. Well, the Tigers have runners at second and third, none out for Kelly Lynch. Bajeron could not have put that one in a more perfect spot. It was just past Ellistad at third and then just beyond Vasquez at short. A foot either way, and one of them grabs that. Now here is Lynch, right-handed bat. Chopper to the right side. Throw home is going to be in time. Beth Farina immediately calling for a review. I was a little surprised Langleyers even came home with that. I thought since they were kind of playing back that they were just kind of conceding the run and to take the out. And on the replay, it is very close. I, I, I think she is safe, but I don't think there's any way that you can prove that video-wise because the slide drew a lot of dirt. Now, well, the couple of looks uh, that you have, those of you who are watching on the uh, telecast, it's one of those deals where Petty was sliding in and the catcher, or Valdez, swiped her back as she was getting to the plate. And it's hard to see if Petty got to the plate before the ball hit her back, or before the glove hit her back. Umpires were pretty quick, though. They're coming out. We'll get a call here in a second. Got to go all the way to the end of the dugout here. All right. Out is called. It was close, but it looks like the proper call. Now, even with that, LSU will still have runners first and third and one out. Now Lynch trying to drive it through the right side, at least put it in play. Petty out at home, but Bajeron at third, Lynch at first, and here's Sierra Daniel, the nine hole hitter. Just back into the lineup, the last uh, now three games. Lefty takes it low ball one. Daniel started at third on Saturday and Sunday for the first time in three weeks. 
and played well both sides of the ball. So here she is again. Ground ball up the middle, knocked down by the second baseman. Shoveled it to second for an out run score. Safe at first is Daniel. This game is tied at two. That was a great play by Langlier. Does that ball look like it was headed up the middle? It went through the circle. Langlier's dove for it. And with her belly on the dirt and the ball in her glove, she shoveled it to her shortstop, Vasquez. But Daniel does her job. She puts the ball in play, and the run scores. And here's Rudity with the runner at first and two down. And strike called at the knees. It's 0-1. Rudity singled and scored a run back in the first inning. So Daniel will get an RBI there. And that is her th fourth of the year. Another strike called outside corner. It's 0-2. Bajeron scores, Lynch forced out. The 0-2, a little bit low, and it's 1-2. Lynch, not one of LSU's fastest runners. Wasn't able to get down and beat the force, but a great play by Langliers. And a little bit of ingenuity. The 1-2, inside out, inside the bag, down the third base line. Rounding third, stopping there is Daniels. Rudity to second with a double, her second hit of the night. And the Tigers have second and third for Sierra Briggs. Third base line was wide open, and Rudity went down and just sliced it as Ellistad was playing off the line. Now the game's tied at two, and Briggs, who struck out in the first, has a chance to give LSU the lead. And strike one is called. Outside corner. And the 0-1. Fouled away. Briggs behind 0-2. Tigers have piled up five hits. And all of them hit pretty well. And have tied the game at two. Briggs down. No balls. Two strikes. And a swing and a miss. She is out on strikes for the second time in the game. But the Tigers get a run on three hits this time. No errors, and the Tigers leave two. We go to the third. New contest tied at two here on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Who says three's a crop? Play 333 from the lottery. Win up to $3,000. Max out your funds and pick up max money. Win up to $20,000. It's bingo time. Play Big Easy Bingo. Win up to $30,000. It's all about the cash. Play $20 all cash. Top prize $500,000. Join the fun with April showers of scratch off from the lottery. Must be at least 21 degrees. We can sum up McDonald's new crispy chicken sandwich in one word. Crispy, but also juicy and tender. Okay, it's crispy, juicy, tender. All one word, but then also pickle. Oh, and potato bun, which is two words. Okay, we can't sum up our new crispy chicken sandwich in one word. So, you'll just have to try it to understand it. Order ahead on the McDonald's app. Participating with dollars. What does it mean to be the best? How do you achieve success? For our Lady of the Lake Health and LSU, we do it by working as a team. We achieve greatness together. Our partnership means student athletes the best care so they can perform their best and be there for the team. Our Lady of the Lake Health and LSU, together, we roar. Back with more LSU Fighting Tigers softball on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Hancock Whitney is the official bank of LSU athletics. You can learn more at HancockWhitney.com in the first inning. Lefty bat corners are in a little bit. And Burzon floats a changeup over the outside corner for a strike. You know, Hayden, one of the ones who swung at the first pitch, 328 hitter, no homers. 11 doubles for the left-hander. A little bit low, and it's one and one. 
I've noticed that the strike zone on both sides is it's a low zone tonight. And that is where Burzon would like to go. If she can get the calls down low. 1-1. One, one. Well, that one did not get that one. Low and inside, it's 2-1. and one. Tayton and then a Crater who homered for the two runs back in the first. Tied at two, third inning. That one's low and away, ball three. Hayden has stolen 10. She happens to get on base. And the pitch, swing and a foul. Board says two and two. I think the count is three and two. I think. I could have maybe invented a pitch that didn't happen also. We do know it is two strikes. The pitch, chopper foul. Confirmed it is a three and two count. Matt Karen, our video guy, has added them up. Again, as always, thanks for his sometimes useful and pertinent information. And it is a three two count. And here it is. Slashed foul just outside of third. That one was close. That would have been a double. Because Newland just now has fished it out of the corner. Lead off batter here in the third. And the 3-2. Fly ball to left, drifting back Newland. She'll be there. Camps out short of the track, makes the catch. And there's one down for Crater. Crater launched a line shot over the right field fence for the two-run homer in the first. Her sixth of the year. The Cajuns, 44th. They average exactly a homer a game. They have 44 homers now, and this is their 44th ball game. And Crater and Ellistad. And Valdez have six. Langoliers leads them with seven. Pitches low, ball one. And the 1-0, chopper to second. Flattens out for Petty. Slings at the first, and it's in time. Two down. Now, Crater struggled in the games against LSU last year. Only was one for six but came up big in the first inning here. Here is Langliers who singled in the first. Langliers, 287 hitter with those seven homers, 30 runs batted in. And reaches for it, lines it into shallow left for a base hit. Another good piece of hitting by Langliers, just kind of, she was off balance, but reached out and uh, ganked it to left. And she'll be on base for Sam Rowe, who grounded to third her first time. Yep, that pitch was, looked like where Burzon wanted it, outside corner at the knees. And Langliers was just better. And she's two for two. Rowe, right-handed bat, went for a high pitch and pulled it foul back out of play. Burzon doesn't live high. She'll break out a rise pitch every now and again, but... Most of what you'll see is is low. Each team with two runs and five hits now. Chopper foul past third. And Burzon quickly up. No balls and two strikes with two down. This one just missed outside and away, one and two. Well, it's one where you hope the batter swings and misses. If she doesn't, uh, then you hope maybe you get the call and didn't get that either. So you come back now with the one, two. That one too far away, and it's two and two. Well, with the hot streak that the Cajuns have been on there uh, and the, the tough schedule they played, Computer numbers are really good right now. This one up and in hits her in the shoulder, it looked like. So runners at first and second. 
And I got ahead 0-2 and, and then ended up losing her on a hit batsman. See if we can get a view on the replay. It got her. Yeah, actually, not in the not in the shoulder at all. It was closer to the bottom of the hand, the wrist area. Fortunately, it looks like Roe is okay. And uh, Ellistad, the third baseman, that struck out back in the first. Very dangerous left-handed batter. And the first pitch drops a little low. Ball one. No, the first couple of outs were uh, pretty quick. Now a couple of runners on. Here's the 1-0. That's low and in, ball two. Score tied at two, top of the third inning. And the 2-0. Chopper to second. Should get out of the inning. Petty to first in time, and that will end the inning. So... Berzon got Ellistad to roll over on a 2-0 pitch. Cajuns get no runs, a hit, and they leave two. They have stranded four. We go to the bottom of the third. Newland, Gutierrez, and Pleasance for LSU in a 2-2 game here on the LSU Sports Radio Network. The passion, the tradition, the rivalries. Sirius XM is your destination for all things college sports, and we've got you covered. On SEC Radio, there is complete coverage of every school in the conference, including live games, plus 24-7 talk and analysis. So cheer along on the Sirius XM free. Subscribe now. See all for details at SiriusXM.com slash SEC Sports. When are three letters more than three letters? When they represent 14 storied universities, generations of tradition and unbridled passion, stadiums and arenas swelled with diehard fans, more than 260 national titles, thousands of All-Americans, and hundreds of Olympians. And the one conference where every catch, shot, swing, and stride just means more. fans 12 and younger don't miss your chance to be a part of mike's kids club presented your home for lsu fighting tiger softball the lsu sports radio network lsu athletics thanks its team lsu corporate partners cox mcdonald's our lady of the lake albertson's coca-cola people's health and hancock whitney and here's Allie Newland, who sacrificed back in the second inning. Newland's average sits at 349. Lefty versus lefty. Strike one, finds the outside corner, and it's 0-1. Newland hit over 500 against Florida a couple weekends ago, but only had one hit against Auburn, and she's behind 0-2 as she fouls this one back. She was one for nine against Auburn, and that one was a single. Here's the 0-2, low and away, one ball and two strikes. Riasetto, a couple of innings, five hits, two runs, both earned. A walk, two strikeouts, both of those to Sierra Briggs. And the one-two pulled it foul. Now the center fielder, Davis, is way into right center field. So Newland has a huge gap in left center, and we see her go there often. And they are... You can see her, she's still behind uh, behind what is still the teal tiger head. One, two, just missed away, and it's two and two. No, they did not go inside there. Now, we've seen Newland wear that gap out over her career here. The two, two, line drive, one hop, short uh, second baseman, had it go off of her glove and scoot away. And Newland will reach first. That was an awkward ball with a lot of spin. Had some overspin on it, and it was a sinking liner that Langliers was just kind of handcuffed on. And we'll see how they rule it. I'd almost be tempted to give her a hit on that because the ball had uh, some spin, and it was sinking. It 
I think she thought she was going to catch it, and then it dropped right down at her knees. Here's Gutierrez. Strike called, and it's 0-1. Gutierrez walked in the first. Going to give an error to the second baseman. I guess I could see that as well. Because the ball was right there, but I'm telling you, it had an awkward angle to it. Gutierrez tries to slap one inside the line at third and just missed, and she's down 0-2. Well, we've seen uh, Rudity find that spot. Third baseman Elistad a little closer to the bag now. Here's the 0-2 up and away. It's a ball and two strikes. Now Newland at first. None out. Here's the one two. Oh, that one missed a little bit up, perhaps. And it's two and two. And the two two to the plate. Fouled away to the left side. The Tigers batting for the first time not behind in the game as we're tied at two. And the leadoff runner at first in Newland, and here is the 2-2. Chopper, a high bounce, Uh uh-oh, double play here. Shortstop picks it up, touches the bag, throw to first, double play. It was a high bouncer over the circle, but it didn't have enough oomph to get into center field. And Vasquez, right by the bag, caught the big hop. Stepped on the bag and got Gutierrez by several steps, so a double play, and that'll bring up Pleasant. Pleasant singled to left and drove in a run back in the first inning. LSU now, and they've actually gone back and changed the Newland play to a hit. So Newland gets a hit there. LSU now has six hits in the game, and Pleasant takes a strike at the knees. So Newland now one for one with the single. Here's the 0-1. Pleasant's jam. She fouls it, and the count's 0-2. Two outs, bottom of the third, uh, 2-2 score. LSU and the Cajuns. And the 0-2, fouled away, back off the end of the bat. LSU will travel to Rocky Top this weekend. Uh, Tennessee for three, Tennessee first place in the SEC. Five o'clock, Friday, 11 a.m. Saturday and 1 p.m. Sunday, all central times. The 0-2, check swing, the pitch is low. And it's one and two. So five, 11, and one. Friday, Saturday, Sunday times. And the one, two, fouled away again. So Pleasant's picked up her first hit in a little while. With that hit. That drove in a run. Again, she was 0 for 7 over the weekend. Hit by a pitch a couple times, but did not get a hit. And the 1-2. Chopped that one foul off of a foot, so it came back down and in. Pleasance has seen uh, pitches all over the place. Outside, inside, up. And she'll see another, one ball and two strikes. Check swing foul at the plate. Gonna get a pit, we're about about nine or 10 pitches into this at bat now, Matt's gonna tell me here. This will be the eighth. All right, so we're about eight pitches in. This will be number eight here. As Pleasance has spoiled a few. Here's the one, two, line drive into the gap and left center field is gonna drop. Center field is over to cut it off. But Pleasance, a solid two for two tonight. And that is good news for LSU. And here is Carly Petty, who doubled back in the second. Pleasance just went with that pitch and guided it into left. Had a chance to get through, but Davis was really fast out there, and she was able to cut it off. Here is Petty. 
Runner at first, two down. And a foul ball back. Now this time Hayden, the left fielder, is a little further over into left center. As she was a closer to the line her first time and Petty split what was a pretty big gap out there for that double. The 0-1, curve ball, slow outside corner strike and it's 0-2. Now with Hayden moving over, Petty has the left field line at her disposal. Here's the 0-2. Pitches inside. Cajuns thought they had a strikeout, but it was called in, and it's 1-2. and two. Their entire dugout thought they had that one, and it was close. Well, again, a 1-2 fouled away. And we'll do it all again. Well, the RPI rating that came out this week, the computer ranking, the Cajuns, 14. 1-2 is high, 2-2. Two two. LSU at 4. Even with a couple losses, they managed to bump up a spot because there were losses from teams around LSU as well. But the Cajuns at 14, very solid. The 2-2 two -two fouled away down the left field line. Now, you, uh, ULL started 9-12, and 12, but they got that win at, Arcan at uh, Oklahoma. Have won 20 of their next 22 since then. A very, very tough schedule. And this, Coach Glasgow, you know, unfortunately, what the committee message last year when they didn't get to host, when everybody kind of thought they should have, was said they didn't play a hard enough schedule. Well, you make sure that's not going to happen this year. Line drive pulled foul this time down the right field line. So they have wins. They have a win over Baylor. Oklahoma in the middle. Popped up foul back, and uh, we continue forward. Two balls and two strikes. This will be the ninth pitch of this at bat. <laughs> and the bonus, nah, never mind. Ninth pitch of the at bat. LSU with seven hits now in the game as we play in the third. The 2-2 two -two popped up. Well, should get out of it from the Cajun standpoint. Left fielder toward the line will come in and get it. Hayden, and that will retire the side. So good at bat. Pitcher, Riosetto ought uh, Ultimately wins the battle. No runs, two hits, one left. We go to the fourth, still tied at two here on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Southern Air Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing, your trusted experts for all your home service needs. With over 35 years of dedicated service, we prioritize your comfort and satisfaction. As an official partner of LSU Athletics, we bring our expertise to every game, from installations to repairs. Our team delivers honest pricing with no surprises. Call us today at 225-777-8888 in exchange. To never feel stuck, that's why at Cox we're making a change too. Now Cox Internet plans are flexible, so you can choose to just go. Champion's choice for hospice care in South Louisiana. With over 10 years of excellence and experience, Bridgeway has three locations to serve you and your loved ones. Baton Rouge, Lafayette, and Plaquemine. Ask for Bridgeway Hospice by name. Your champion's choice in comfort and compassionate care. Bridgeway Hospice says, Go Tigers! Back with more LSU Fighting Tigers softball on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Today's game is brought to you by Bridgeway Hospice, your champion's choice in comfort and compassionate care, serving the greater Baton Rouge area and most of South Louisiana. Ask for Bridgeway for your loved one's hospice care. Bridgeway Hospice says, go Tigers. Let's take 10 seconds for station identification here on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Hear the Tigers roar worldwide. The LSU Sports Radio Network and the LSU Sports Mobile App. Victoria Valdez, the catcher, takes an off speed from Burzon for strike one to start the fourth. Patrick Wright with you here at Tiger Park. Taylor Sharp in our Capital One studio. Welcome back to Tiger Park. Two ball, uh, two runs for each team. Two runs, five hits. LSU high chopper. That is a foul ball, third base side. 
It was a good play by Sierra Daniel. She went up, leapt up, and got it. But the home plate umpire, whose call that is, uh, says it was foul. She went ahead with the play, and the out would have been recorded at first, but looked like that was definitely the right call. And when Burzon is right, that's what she gets the opposing batters to do, hit a lot of those high choppers. Check swing foul back into the net. The Cajun double play that they turned in the last inning, that is something they are pretty good at. 35 double plays turned by their defense. That leads the nation. In fact, nobody else has turned as many as 30, and they've got 35. Here again, the 0-2 to the right-hander missed away. Bajeron tried to bring it back to no avail, and it's 1-2. and two. And the 1-2 got on top of a high pitch, pulled it foul. Again, not something that uh, Berzon does super often, go up in the zone. Valdez seemed to like that one. She popped a short her first time. That was the good over-the-shoulder catch by Pleasance out on the left field grass. 2-2 score in the fourth. Lead-off batter, Burzon will bring it. Ground ball to short. Pleasance scoops it up, fires in plenty of time, one out. That'll bring up the eight-hole hitter, Cecilia Vasquez, the shortstop. Vasquez, a 301 hitter, five homers, so pretty good pop for the bottom of the order. She grounded back to the circle her first time, right-handed batter. And a low, low and away strike call, 0 and 1. Might have gotten a bonus gift there. But the count is 0 and 1. Infield plays back for Vasquez. That one in the dirt, one ball and one strike. Cajuns will host Nichols tomorrow in Lafayette. Pitch low and in again, two and one. On their all-time list, the Cajuns have played ULM the most, 147. They are now in the same conference, the Sun Belt. And they've played McNeese 135 times. Ground ball. That was an awkward spinning ball to Pleasant. Start of first in time. Vasquez got out in front of it and kind of pulled it off the end of the bat. Then the ball hit. I'm going to watch it on the replay. Hit in front of the circle. Then it took a couple of turns and died. It looked like it was going to get to Pleasance a little more quickly than it did. She realized she needed to come charge it and made a solid play for the second out. That one changed directions at least twice. And here is Falterman, who singled in the second. Lefty bat. Ball one is away. Picked up her third hit of the year. Was two for 21 coming in. Slapped down and chopped it over Daniel into left field. Daniel in again close. The 1-0. Strike inside corner. One and one. Two two top of the fourth. One one to the plate. Runs up. Pulls it to Gutierrez. Got a toss to Petty. Covering behind her and a good play all the way around. Gutierrez, I think, thought if she didn't go get that one, that Petty wasn't going to be able to get to it in time. So good uh, communication between first and second baseman there, and that'll get LSU their first one, two, three inning. We go bottom four, LSU and the Cajuns tied at two. Bottom three in LSU's order when we return on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Unrivaled content, unprecedented access. LSU Gold, powered by Bayou Traditions, is the only place for exclusive behind-the-scenes content featuring your favorite LSU teams. It's all access to the Tigers, all year long, from pregame warm-ups to post-game celebrations and every moment in between. You can watch LSU Gold anywhere, anytime, and on your favorite device. Go to lsu.gold today to sign up for your free seven-day trial so you can be there for each step of LSU's championship journeys. That's lsu.gold. 
the See You Later Everyone Else Conference. This is the SEC, where it just means more. LSU Tiger fans are gearing up with real Tigers apparel and merchandise from the official online store at lsushop.net. Get jerseys, sideline gear, polos, t-shirts, hats, official team merchandise from Nike, accessories, and much more. Over 3,600 products all ship right to your door. Head to the place real Tiger fans go for the selection only real Tiger. Back with more. LSU Fighting Tigers softball on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Macy Bajeron singled in the second inning, scored LSU second run. We are tied at two. And Riasetto still out in the circle for the Cajuns. Now they are trying to uh, plug up that hole on the left side. Strike one on a pitch over the outside corner. But Bajeron's got big room up the middle. She somehow snuck one between Elistad and Vasquez. Her first at bat. Pitch is low, and it's one and one. And again, they are kind of so close together right now. Would have to be hit extremely hard or in the perfect spot again. One one. It's up high, so it's two balls and one strike. And the 2-1. Right field, fly ball right at the right fielder who comes in a couple steps and grabs at Falterman. As Bajeron went opposite field with pretty good authority, but Falterman was playing deep and was right there. Kelly Lynch grounded to second her first time. That was with a runner at third, and the runner was thrown out at home. That was Petty, who got thrown out by Langliers. And low and in, 1-0. Lynch had been 0 for 20 going into the Auburn series, picked up a hit. To break out of that, but was 1 for 7 for the weekend. 1-0. Low and in again, ball two. And the 2-0. Misses away, ball three. Sierra Daniel is on deck. Tigers have out hit the cage in seven to five. Lots of base runners for both squads. Three and zero to Lynch, and she watches ball four, and expect a pinch runner here for Lynch. Beth Serena already walking forward toward the home plate umpire, and we'll see who it's going to be. I think it's going to be Madeline Gilio, and it is. So Gilio will run it first. And Sierra Daniel will bat. She grounded out in the second. That was uh, good enough to get a run home. Tigers had runners at the corners. That was the play where Langliers dove by the second base back, gloved the ball, and then with the glove, scooped it to the shortstop covering. Ball one is up high, so that's five in a row out of the zone. Usually pretty good control, 20 walks and 85 innings coming in. But she's walked a couple. Down and away, ball two. Now one out in the inning. Tigers trying to turn the lineup over. Rudity is two for two in this game. And Jerry Glasgow wants a visit. Getting paid up to two days early with direct deposit is another reason banking with Capital One is one of the easiest decisions ever. That is banking reimagined. What's in your wallet? Terms apply. See Capital One dot com slash bank. Capital One N A member FDIC. Just one of those quick little deals to kind of break up the bad rhythm. She had thrown six in a row. Nothing really profound that the coach can say, except just let me give you a little breather so you can regroup. And a low strike called at the knee, so it's two and one. And sometimes all it takes is just a little quick break to get it going again. The two one. Chopper towards short. Shortstop bobbles. Doesn't have a play anywhere. Runners at first and second. Vasquez bobbled it. 
because the ball wasn't hit that fast. She wanted the force at second, but Giglio was already there. And then she wanted to throw to first, but Daniel was already there. So the Tigers have two on, one out for Rudity, who has singled and scored and then also doubled. Lefty bat, two on. And she chops it to second. Short out by the second baseman. Langlier still to first in time. But the Tigers have runners at second and third. And Sierra Briggs, who has kind of had the toughest night against Riosetto. Riosetto has struck her out twice, or only two of the game. So second and third for Briggs. And the first pitch is up and away ball one. Allie Newland on deck. If the inning continues, Tigers have left uh, four runners on base. That has been something they have done a lot of recently. 1-0. Ground ball. Base hit in the right field. Gilio scores. Here comes Daniel. She will score. Throw to second is in the center field. It's a 4-2 game, and Briggs makes up for the two strikeouts with a two-run single to right. And we are going to have a pitching change. Jerry Glasgow is out. Pitching change, timeout, a 90-second break. Four to two Tigers on the LSU Sports Radio Network. We can sum up McDonald's new crispy chicken sandwich in one word. Crispy, but also juicy and tender. Okay, it's crispy, juicy, tender. All one word. But then, also pickle. Oh, and potato bun, which is two words. Okay, we can't sum up our new crispy chicken sandwich in one word, so you'll just have to try it to understand it. Order ahead on the McDonald's app at participating McDonald's. What does it mean to be the best? How do you achieve success? For our Lady of the Lake Health and LSU, we do it by working as a team. We achieve greatness together. Our partnership means student-athletes get the best care so they can perform their best and be there for the team. Our Lady of the Lake Health and LSU. Together, we roar. You can't smell it, but you can almost taste it. And whether it's for a family get-together or a game-day feast, having Manda in the mix always sounds good. For three generations, their quality meats and original seasonings have made Manda a Louisiana legend and made their family sausage Louisiana's family sausage. The flavor says it all. Manda Fine Meats, the official smoked sausage of LSU Athletics. Back with more LSU Fighting Tigers softball on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Sam Landry, the right-hander, first pitch to Allie Newland is a strike, and it's 0-1. The Briggs uh, made up for the two strikeouts with a two-run single through the right side. And LSU has a 4-2 lead, their first lead of the night. Landry, their ace, with the most innings thrown, 0-1. Slow line drive, soft line drive to the right side. Picked up on one hop by Langliers. Third to first in time, that'll end the inning, but LSU gets two. There was an error charged on that ball that Daniel hit. So two runs on one hit. There was an error, and the Tigers left a couple. We will go, actually they left one. We go to the fifth, four to two Tigers on the LSU Sports Radio Network. At Albertsons, curbside pickup is easy, but delivery is even easier. Try our new Fresh Pass program and enjoy unlimited free delivery on all your grocery needs. We're offering even more perks like 5% off some of our best brands like O Organic and Open Nature. Plus, even more rewards that never expire to use on gas or free groceries. Start your free 30-day trial today when you sign up for Albertsons Fresh Pass and get free delivery anytime and exclusive perks. Cool supplies, scheduled book club, and rent her to dance? No wonder it's so hard to schedule your health care. At Women's Hospital, our priority is women's health. And nobody keeps women on the go like we do. So you can get it all done and take care of the special people in your life. Be healthy and proactive. Keep your annual mammogram appointment because early cancer detection can save your life. At Women's, your health is our priority. Make it yours too. Throw your 
your home for LSU Fighting Tigers softball. The LSU Sports Radio Network. Cajuns will bat from behind for the first time in the game, but they will have the top of the order. Maya Davis, who has flown to center, grounded to second. Lefty bat. She swings and misses, trying to golf one down and in. And did not get it. So the count is 0-1. And the 0-1 from Burzon showed bunt, then went to slap, and then fouled it. Well, in the games, uh, the five games last year against LSU, Davis started all of them, was a 250 hitter. Four hits, drove in a run, stole a base. Here's the 0-2. That one bounced in front of the plate. Burzon, four innings, five hits, 60 pitches. I'm 63 now, counting these three. Two runs, both earned top of the first inning on the homer. She has not walked any. She has struck out just one, but is ahead four to two. Here's the one-two, tapper foul. Uh, Davis, just uh, the type of person you want leading off. Pesky hitter, does not strike out a ton and has 15 steals, so you know she's fast. And the one-two. In the dirt away, and it's two and two. Corners are in a little bit, but with two strikes, they've backed up some. Here's the two two. Watched another one bounce, and it's three and two. Haven't had many long counts for Burzon tonight. This is one here at three and two. And here it is. Swing and a miss. Pitch dropping out of sight. Second strikeout for Burzon. The other one was Elistad to end the first inning. That one looked like a changeup. Hayden has singled and flown to left. And Burzon has retired five in a row now. Missed the inside corner. And it's one and no crowd wanted that. It looked like it was inside. And it's ball one. Left handed bat. Number two hitter in the lineup. Off speed outer corner, and it's one and one. Call strike. Burr's on the, the tough luck loser. Uh, the Friday game against Auburn gave up three runs, only one of them was earned. Slow grounder to short. Pleasance waits for it to throw to first. Close, but in time at the bag. Hayden hustling hard down the line, and the Pleasance throw just got there. I don't think the Cajuns are offering going to offer a challenge here. And here is Crater, who homered in the first inning. Left-handed bat. Two outs, bases empty. Strike one, off speed, outside corner. And quickly the 0-1. Chopper to short. Pleasance charge, short hop, throw in plenty of time. Inning is over. Pleasance has been busy at shortstop in this game. That's the fourth grounder she's fielded. She made the outstanding over-the-shoulder catch. Three up, three down. Seven in a row for Sydney Burzon. Bottom of the fifth, LSU four. The Cajuns two here on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Tiger fans, this is Eddie Kennison, former LSU football wide receiver. If you know me, you know I'm all about making big plays. Tigers win! Tigers win! That's why I joined the team at LSU Sports Properties. Our goal here is to help businesses make big plays both on and off the size the power of LSU Athletics to promote your business and sponsor LSU Athletics today. Call 225-578-2788. Go Tigers. When are three letters more than three letters? When they represent 14 storied universities, generations of tradition and unbridled passion. Stadiums and arenas swelled with diehard fans. More than 260 national titles, thousands of All-Americans, and hundreds of Olympians. And the one conference where every catch, shot, swing, and stride 
just means more. Hey, Tiger fans, 12 and younger, don't miss your chance to be a part of Mike's Kids Club. Presented by Shell, the exclusive kids club of LSU Athletics. Join Mike's Kids Club for only $25. Get the official Mike's Kids Club t-shirt, free admission to select LSU athletic events, and much, much more. To learn about upcoming events and to join, please visit LSUMKC.com. The Mike's Kids Club, presented by Shell. Back with more. LSU Fighting Tigers softball on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Well, the Tigers will try to add to their lead now. They're up 4-2 to two going bottom of the fifth. Gutierrez, Pleasance, and Petty will be the batters. Gutierrez has walked and then hit into a double play, short, unassisted to first. Facing Sam Landry, who will see her second batter of the game. Much harder thrower than Riazetto delivers that one outside, ball one. Landry, 130 innings, 115 strikeouts, and a 2.36 ERA. Ooh, that's a slow, beautiful off-speed pitch inside corner, one and one. Oh, it looked like it was going to hit Gutierrez and then uh, took a quick turn to the plate. Right-handed pitcher. Here's the 1-1. Pulled foul. Well, LSU will see the best the SEC has to offer this weekend in Tennessee. They have the best staff ERA, and it's not even really close in league play. Carly Pickens and Peyton Gottschall, the two aces. Another slow one inside, and it's two balls and two strikes. Gutierrez kind of let that one go. And the 2-2. Two -two. Fly ball down the left field line, twisting foul. Left fielder dives, can't quite get it in foul territory. Good effort by Hayden. Laid out for it, and she hasn't gotten up yet. As she dove, and then kind of that area where the grass meets the warning track, she tried to lay out flat. She has popped up now. Might have had the wind knocked out over a little bit. Also, uh, Making, I think making sure she wasn't bleeding from the mouth a little bit because she hit the uh, to hit the uh, her chin, but a great effort and she just missed it in foul territory, and then took a little slide. So center fielder Davis, who had gone to check on her, is now back in her spot. Landry making sure everybody is where they're supposed to be before she delivers the two-two to Gutierrez. Here's the pitch. Fly ball hit into the gap in right center field over on the run. Davis makes the catch. Davis very fast out there, covered a lot of ground. The wind was kind of knocking that down a little bit, and she got to it one away. And here's Pleasance, who has two hits and an RBI, so good to see her rolling again a little bit. Four to two, LSU bottom of the fifth. Here's the first pitch. Strike at the knees. I was talking about Tennessee. They're pitching their uh, staff ERA in SEC games is 180. South Carolina second at 236. LSU third at 245. And Landry needs a timeout. Pitch clock was running down. I don't think she was quite ready. So she'll reset. And bring the 0-1. Check swing, pitch low and in. And the count is 1-1. One and, one. and the pitch to Pleasance. A little slow roller to second. Got jammed there. Throw to first in time by Langliers. There's two down for Carly Petty. Mm -hmm. 
Petty has doubled and flown to left. And she'll hit left-handed with two outs in the bottom of the fifth. Bajeron on deck. Shows bunt. It was a changeup that she didn't have a good feel for, and it went down and away, or down and in, and it's one ball, no strikes. Over across the way at the box, LSU leads you and 4-2 in baseball. 1-0. Low strike at the knees, and it's 1-1. One one. Petty's average at 329 as she stands in. Well, the Tigers with eight hits tonight. Not much lower than their total for the weekend against Auburn. Which they had 15. Pitch is low and away, two and one. Had 15 hits, three doubles, two homers. So Petty, a two-run homer. Rudity, a two-run homer. And Gutierrez, RBI single Sunday. That was it for the offense. Two-one. Coming into Petty, and she pulled it foul. Count is two and two. And the 2-2 from Landry just missed low and in. Three balls, two strikes. And the 3-2, strike three call, change up outside corner. Petty knew it. Inning is over. We go to the sixth. 4-2 LSU on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Who says three's a crop? Play 333 from the lottery. Win up to $3,000. Max out your fund and pick up max money. Win up to $20,000. It's bingo time. Play Big Easy Bingo. Win up to $30,000. It's all about the cash. Play $20. Participate in McDonald's. And we're back with the action. Coke Zero Sugar might be the best Coke ever? That's right, Jim. With an irresistible taste and zero sugar, Coke Zero Sugar is a must-try for any sports fan. So make sure you... Wait, Jim, I didn't mean try it right now. We're still on the air. Cajuns will bat here in the sixth inning. It'll be four, five, six in the order. Langliers, Rowe, and Ellistad. Langliers has two hits. She's two for two, has two of the five. Cajun's got three in the first on the hit column, two runs. Since then, the next. <laughs> Gave you a wrong score a while ago in baseball. I read uh, our score here, 4-2. to two. It's actually UNO 3, LSU 1, top of the fourth. I thought that 4-2 to two sounded familiar. Pitch is low and away, and it's 1-1. One and one. Four runs, eight hits, LSU. Two runs, five hits, an error for the Cajuns. Pitch is low and in, 2-1. And the 2-1, chopper up the middle, backhand, oh, off the glove of Petty. Tried to backhand, knew she was going to have to set and make a long throw. The Langliers will be on at first base. We'll see how they rule that. Petty, I think, had a chance at the out, but she had to move a good ways and was going to be throwing against her body. And here is Sam Lowe, uh, Sam Rowe. Going to give her a base hit, probably the appropriate call. Langliers, three for three, pop up into shallow right on the run, and it's dropped by Rudity. Throw to second to get the force, though, and a good recovery by Rudity and right. As that ball, the wind was pushing it toward the ground really hard, 
and Rudity running toward the line and had it hit her glove and she dropped it. But then she stood up and threw a strike to get a force at second as the runner at first had to wait, assuming that was going to be caught. So Rudity uh, turned disaster into a force play. So runner at first, one away. Lefty bat, Elistad takes it high, ball one. You know, in the six hole, Elistad is one of their big RBI bats. She leads the Sun Belt Conference in conference games with 27. And ball two is low. So that was uh, the old 9 6 put out at second base. Rudity to Pleasance covering the bag. 2 0 to Elistad. Off speed strike over the outside corner. And the count is two and one. Then Rowe, the new runner at first base. Here's the two one. Just missed away. It's three and one. And I know Elistad is the tie and run. I think LSU is being very careful with her as the next two batters 0 for 4 combined. The 3 1. And it is ball four low. And that'll bring up Valdez, the catcher who has popped to short, grounded to short. Well, Valdez would, she hits one of those hard grounders to short, I think would be a double play candidate. 283 hitter, right handed bat. Missed away, ball one. Now does 26 runs batted in, so she is a good run producer out of the seven hole. Two runners on, one out, four to two LSU in the sixth. Line drive, that is foul, past third. Daniel was close to the line, that ball av avoided her. Count is one and one. In the dirt, two balls and a strike. So Berzon has hit a little bit of a rough patch here in the sixth inning. Valdez with six homers. She's got power. And Berzon now needs time. And this pitch is low, ball three. Now Vasquez, the shortstop, due up next, but Burzon um, flirting with a lot of danger here. Two on and a 3-1 count to the right-handed hitting Valdez. And here is the 3-1. Slow roller to short. Pleasance has to charge, throw in time, two down. It was a check swing, slow roller. And the only play Pleasance had was at first. She has been busy tonight, but now the tie and run is in scoring position with two down. Especially the last three innings. Pleasance had a couple of grounders in the fourth, two in the fifth, one here in the sixth, and also uh, caught the ball that Rudity threw. So here's Vasquez, is grounded to the circle, has grounded to short, and pops it up, foul back, and the count's 0 and 1. Four to two, LSU. Runner at third is Rowe, runner at second is Elistad. Right-handed bat in the box. Swing and a miss, good hard drop, and it's 0 and 2. Vasquez, 294 average. No homers on the season. And the Tiger fans coming to life a little bit. Here's the 0-2. Swing and a miss. Got her down and away. So Burzon works herself out of sixth inning trouble. No runs, a hit, two left. We go to the bottom of the sixth. It's LSU 4, the Cajuns 2 here on the LSU Sports Radio Network. The passion.
passion, the tradition, the rivalries. Sirius XM is your destination for all things college sports, and we've got you covered. On SEC Radio, there is complete coverage of every school in the conference, including live games, plus 24-7 talk and analysis. So cheer along on the Sirius XM app and listen to your favorite team anywhere. And now you can get three months of Sirius XM free. Subscribe now. See all for details at SiriusXM.com slash SEC Sports. The SEC is more than the Southeastern Conference. It's the Saturday Electrifying Conference, the Sunday Elite Conference, the Stadium Erupting Conference, the Stunning Eyeballs Conference, the Superbly Entertaining Conference, the Story Enduring Conference, and more often than not, the See You Later Everyone Else Conference. This is the SEC, where it just means more. LSU Tiger fans are gearing up with real Tigers apparel and merchandise from the official online store at lsushop.net. Get jerseys, sideline gear, polos, t-shirts, hats, official team merchandise from Nike, accessories, and much more. Over 3,600 products all ship right to your door. Head to the place real Tiger fans go for the selection only real Tiger fans get at lsushop.net. Your home for LSU Fighting Tigers softball. The LSU Sports Radio Network. Who says three is a crowd? You can join the crowd and play 333 from the lottery. Went up to $3,000. Visit your favorite lottery retailer and ask for 333 today for your chance to win up to three grand. Louisiana Lottery giving you a reason to smile. You must be at least 21 to purchase. Bajeron, Lynch, Daniel, the LSU bottom three of the order. To face Sam Landry, who has gotten him four up and four down. And here's the first pitch. And strike one inside corner. Bajeron singled and scored in the second. Flew to right in the fourth. Lynch, Daniel, the next two. Here is the 0-1. We'll change up is lined into center field for a base hit. Bajeron very patiently waited on that one and hit it over the bag just past Vasquez. I believe we will have a pinch runner here for Bajeron since she is on base for the first time tonight. We've seen Giglio already, probably Maya Townsend this time, and it will be. Lynch is grounded out, walked, and scored. Step in with a 220 average. See what the play might be. Bunt maybe? No, it didn't show it. Took a strike over the outside corner. And the 0-1 showing bunt and then fouled it at the plate. Oh, she is behind 0-2. So showed bunt the second time. And couldn't quite get it to work. And now she will be swinging away. Third baseman Elistad plays off the line at third. If Lynch were to pull one, there is room. Here's the 0-2. Swing and a foul tip. Lynch is out on strikes, and there's one down. That'll bring up Daniel, who's been in the middle of some things again here tonight. Got an RBI on a grounder to second, and then uh, reached on what was ruled an error, that slow hit ball back in the fourth inning. Uh, She'll bat left-handed. And she lines it into right field for a base hit. Rounding second, stopping there is Townsend. That was just a little pulled looper into the open area. There was nobody out there. in a shallow right. And there's one out. Runner 
Tigers at first and second. Top of the order, Rudity. Tigers looking to break this thing open. Two-run lead, bottom of the sixth. Rudity two for three. Single, double, ground out. No two on, one out, and then Briggs on deck. And the first pitch is low and away, ball one. One out, two on. Lefty bat, the 1-0 check swing. It's low and in, ball two. Well, Landry, not quite as good a control as Riazetto. Landry, 48 walks and 130, and it's not bad. That pitch is a high strike at the belt, and it's two and one. It's not bad numbers, but not quite as good as what Riazetto had. 20 and only 85 innings. And the 2-1, swing and a foul back. Pitch down and in to the lefty, Rudity. Cajuns will host Southern Miss this weekend in Sunbelt action. LSU off to Tennessee. 5 o'clock Friday, 11 a.m. Saturday, 1, a, uh, 1 p.m. Sunday. 2-2 two -two count to Rudity, infield. Pretty much straight away, as is the outfield. Swing and a miss on an outstanding changeup. And Rudity just kind of walks back to the dugout. And that was a very good pitch by Landry. I mean, it was right over the plate, but Rudity was not looking for that. And here is Briggs, who had the big hit of the game. It was a two-run single in the fourth that gave LSU the lead. And that's where we are now, 4-2. to two. Ten hits now for the Tigers. Here's the pitch. Briggs pokes it foul left side. Oh, with two down, she will bat. That single in the fourth inning was with two out. Runners were at second and third. And the 0-1. Tries to drop down a bunt, fouls it, and it's 0-2. No good speed on the bases. Townsend second, Daniel first. And Briggs has struck out again, went fishing for one down and away, another off speed. Well, she struck out three times as Briggs, but the two-run single she hit in the fourth has LSU ahead. They will take that lead to the seventh. It's 4-2 to two LSU on the LSU Sports Radio Network. What does it mean to be the best? How do you achieve success? For our Lady of the Lake Health and LSU, we do it by working as... I remind you that Cox is proud to be the presenting sponsor for LSU Women's Athletics. Bottom, a top of the seventh inning, bottom of the Cajun order. Falterman takes strike one. As she showed bunt, took it down over the inside part of the plate. Falterman picked up her third hit of the season earlier in this game. She is one for three now, or one for two. The 0-1 to the lefty, strike two, outside corner. And it's 0-2. Erzon, six innings, six hits, 93 pitches. Has not allowed a run since the first. 0 2. Runs up, taps it foul. Spoiled that one. She has three strikeouts, but two of them have been in the last couple innings. Top of their order due up. The 0-2, I think she held up. Yep, she did. It was down and in. Broke the wrist a little bit. Bat move, but not certainly not through the zone. The count is one and two. You appeal that, hoping third base umpire maybe wasn't awake, but correct call was made. And now the one-two. Tapper to the circle. Burzon has it. The throw to first a little high this time. But Gutierrez climbed the ladder, and there's one out. 
Well, Berzon has spiked the throw to first and then lobbed that throw. Gutierrez may be having a few nightmares tonight about some of these, but, but she's been there and caught all of them. And the big first out of the seventh here is Maya Davis. 0 for 3 at the top. She shows bunt, one uh, floats away, and it's one ball, no strikes. Even with 0 for 3 tonight, Davis still above 400, a 401 hitter. Lefty with a ton of speed. And a little slap to third. Daniel quickly to first, not in time. Looked like she was able to beat that one. Again, that lightning speed. It was just a little tap to third. It had a bounce for Daniel, but boy, Davis was flying. Daniel did everything she could, and I believe, believe she is safe. They're going to, I don't know if this is an umpire challenge or an LSU challenge, but they're going to go look, and I'm pretty sure she's going to be safe. We don't know who challenged exactly, but again, after the sixth inning, it's the umpire's discretion. They can initiate their own challenge without a coach having to use one. But I am pretty certain this is going to be a safe call. Unless I see something uh, a lot different than what we've seen. I mean, Daniel was in a little bit at third and still and did everything she could to make it as close as it was. That was just the uh, the perfect hit. And that's why Davis hits 400. She's pretty good at that. And uh, assuming she'll be at first base, Maddie Hayden will bat. Hey, we got it again. They're going to slow it down. Yeah, she's, she's safe. Foot on the bag before the ball gets there. So we should get a safe call here, hopefully pretty soon, because I thought it was fairly fairly obvious on the one look we got. They get different looks down at the end of the dugout, but when they see the one we saw here, they will rule this one safe. Hancock Whitney is the official bank of LSU Athletics. You can learn more at HancockWhitney.com slash LSU. So uh, Ty and Ron will come to the plate. Umpire's going to come out. I think we know what the message is going to be, but we'll go ahead and let you hear it anyway. All right, we didn't, we didn't get the verbal on that. We just got the safe call. So those of you at home on the radio uh, couldn't, couldn't see it, but safe call was ruled. And now... Uh, what Burzon will have to deal with is this. You got hit, uh, Hayden, one for three, and then Crater, who homered in the first inning. So barring a double play, Crater is going to get the bat here. So one out, seventh inning, four to two LSU, left-handed bat. And the pitch, swing and a miss. Hayden uh, was trying to do the heavy lifting there, and she was out in front of one. Oh, and on. she has not hit a homer all season. Strike two called over the outside corner. Hayden does have 11 doubles. Now she's got a little bit of gap power. Burzon is ahead in the count here. No balls and two strikes. And the 0-2, it's in the dirt. Good stop. Bajeron couldn't find it at first. But she did finally locate it. Davis, fast runner, stayed at first base. Hayden has only struck out five times this year. She is going to be a tough out. One, two, chopper to short. Short hop, Pleasance to second for the force, and there's two down. Pleasance again in the middle of the action. And it'll be up to this. Crater, who homered in the first. And will bat from the left side. The homer was her sixth. RBIs 13 and 14. 
She is also grounded to second, grounded to short, and she fouls it. Inside half there, jammed it, fouled it over toward the Cajun dugout. Teams will meet next Tuesday in Lafayette. And we've had a good one tonight. Four to two LSU, top of the seventh. High chopper, Pleasance will grab it, throw to first, ball game over, and the Tigers win. Overcame a two to nothing first inning deficit. Sidney Burzon shut him out the rest of the way, and the Tigers cobbled together four runs, and LSU a winner, four to two, the final score. We'll take a break, come back to Tiger Park after this on the LSU Sports Radio Network. You made it through three Zoom calls, exchanged that blouse, had lunch with your mom, and brought the cat to the vet. Again. No wonder you can barely think about your health care. At Women's Hospital, our priority is women's health. And nobody keeps women on the go like we do. So you can roll through your errands without slowing down. Be healthy and proactive. Keep your annual mammogram appointment because early cancer detection can save your life. At Women's, your health is our priority. Make it yours, too. Southern Air Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing, your trusted experts for 